very pleased that he accepted the invitation. Uh, he's a he's a very very seasoned uh, expert in in Shanghai. He heads up the manufacturing business council for AmCham, and uh, he heads up the uh, uh, the ATTA, the uh, Asia Turnaround Association and Transformation. Um, and he is uh, quite well known for doing some uh, real magic in, in, in pulling companies out of the weeds and fixing stuff. So uh, we are uh, tonight uh, very lucky to have him. And without further ado, I'll, I'll, I'll let him take it from there. Sure, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, glad to be here to... Uh... Well, to bring this uh, interesting topic, at least for me, it is. So I will switch to the presentation mode so people can see what, what I'm going to talk about. Now, basically, uh, people always have the interim management uh, managers coming in. Uh, the, the problem is with the uh, COVID-19 travel protocol and the, the concerns for uh, catching COVID-19, uh, people can't travel. So you, you have lost the uh, ability for the senior executives coming from Europe or US. So let's go through this and then see. Uh, first, just a quick introduction. Uh, as, as Jay has introduced, I have been in Asia. I've, I've been back to the US and coming back to Asia, China for 27 years now. 12 years, I was with Avery Dennison, uh, the largest label manufacturer, uh, growing business, Greenfield, uh, joint venture and turnaround uh, business for industrial and uh, consumer products. For them. And then 15 years, I'm more like a freelance operating partner for private equity groups. Uh, different city capital is more famous one in China. But Harbor Groups, the Vector Capital, American Industrial, a lot of them, uh, and EQT. So I have completed 11 insurance GM assignment, and I'm working on a 12. I'm in Suzhou instead of Shanghai because uh, this company's headquarters uh, is in, in Suzhou, which is about 100 kilometers away. Now, the different industries, a lot of them has automotive and uh, industrial, just general industrial electronics. This, the one I'm working on is uh, actually a medical device. So in addition, I also am an executive coach. I coached over 70 executives, and most of them are multinational. Some are startup uh, entrepreneurs, but most of them are NMC executives in different industries, manufacturing as well as the service industries. Uh, Jay already ma mentioned American Chamber of Commerce uh, as well as the ATTA, so I'll skip those. Now, if we look at how people normally remove uh, the G general manager in China or other, uh, other countries, uh, some Western companies in China, they have large enough of bench strength to, remove, to replace the GM with the internal candidates. A lot of uh, multinationals have a billion dollars of sales or $5 billion of sales today. So it, it would not be a surprise that they, they actually have enough people in different divisions to be able to do that. Now, uh, but also often if Western companies are not happy with their general managers, what they normally do is confidentially, they would start a search, find a, find a general manager candidate, then they will have a senior executive coming in and then just remove the, uh, existing GM and, and then place the, the new general manager and then provide some coaching. Now, if the parent company simply does not have trust in the general manager anymore, they will replace them immediately. In which case, the senior executive will be coming in to, uh, to replace them by recruiting for replacement. Now, PE firms, uh, especially the mid-sized PE firms, that normally they, they're Portfolio companies don't have much of bench strength. So they will normally work with external internal GMs and work out their objectives and then to make and then they work with the, the interim GM mostly to make sure the assignments is done properly until the new 
replacement is found. And usually in these cases, they, the uh, interim GM has to do some dirty work, you know, clean up, clean up the mess so the new GM can then move on to a, a clean, with a clean platform. Now, of course, some Western companies also hire interim GMs until a, a replacement is found. Now, how do you do this within the pandemic? Because uh, it's, it's difficult to have any headquarter executives coming into China because the quarantine requirements on both sides, and also family concerns. So many may say, hey, we don't want you to leave. And so you, you really pickle in a way that uh, I talked to a lot of Western executives that they are managing businesses. They, they were, they, some of them are very uh, profit, uh, successful, but privately will say, I don't trust certain general managers, but you know, I, there's no easy way to re remove them. And the number seems to be okay. So I, I will sit and wait until, until the COVID pandemic is, is over and then I'll, I'll do something about it. And that's, that's quite common. I, I heard that those comments. So what are the proper ways to replace a China GM during this time? Now, for example, if the uh, headquarter has worked with certain interim executives for example, me, before, you know, some of my assignments are repeat assignments from the same private equity companies. And sometimes for the same portfolio company in different positions, that happened too. So that would be one way. And this, the other way would be the headquarters of executives in sister divisions who can help headquarters to select and identify and work with the uh, intern executive. So that, that's another way. Uh, third way would be the headquarter has trusted service providers. They could be uh, risk control type uh, organization or, or lawyers that they work on certain contracts and stuff. And they could, they could help the headquarters identify the candidates for these assignments. Of course, the headquarters can also hire a recruiter to do this, right? I mean, so there, there's several ways to do this. Let's look at the uh, three cases that I'm sharing. The number one case, for example, the, the this case, the Chinese Chinese business is stagnate, stagnating for the past few years. And during the 2020 with the COVID-19, it just kind of lapsed. Uh, so the company basically asked the trusted the service provider to say, hey, do you know any suitable interior GM? There is no in, internal candidates. And the internal candidate was identified by the service provider and, and talked to the headquarters executives and then agreed on the task. Basically says, hey, you just stabilize and write the ship. I mean, that was exactly the way they described it. So they, they don't want to make dramatic changes. They want to understand what the dynamics, what's really going on. The local general manager has been doing things for a long time this way, and it's really not too familiar, headquarters really doesn't know too much about the business. And the, cert, the, trust, the service provider uh, negotiated the separation package with the uh, existing general manager. So the interim GM is installed and identified areas to improve. Basically, the key thing is really, they've been selling everything. The units is you know, one of the major criteria. So whether it's highly profitable units, or not so very profitable units, they all sell. I mean, so the, obviously the shift is toward the higher end products and that's that's usually simple. In, in fact, a lot of interim general assignment, GM assignments are the solution are actually reasonably simple. If it's too complex, actually it's, it's much harder to, to correct. So, uh, so the resources are, are are shifted instead of trying to more cost, uh, uh, give them the, uh, the price concessions would be more service orientation. Case two, this one is sort of interesting one. It's a private equity firm uh, to remove a GM for uh, clients concerns, basically. Now, the managing director for the private equity firm is the one who recruited the, uh, the, the insurance GM through the ATTA has connections with, with me and the ATTA. Now, the first interior GM candidate and so working with the CEO of the portfolio company, they have some understanding problems, but basically 
there is a question whether there's really a, a compliance comp uh, uh, issue or simply the CEO doesn't trust the GM. You know, just doesn't trust him, lost confidence, but there's no clear evidence of compliance, you know, concerns. Uh, but th at this point in time, the best way is for the engineering GM and the CEO to say, maybe this is not the best uh, match for, for this assignment. We'll, we'll come back to this, why, why this is the case. And the second interim GM candidate was, was identified shortly and then basically agree on the, the assignment is really just to remove the GM because the CEO have lost trust in, in this person. And this assignment is now near completion. The China GM is removed, the new GM is installed and the uh, interim GM is going through the transition to make sure things go through properly. Next one is uh, a listed company is looking for interim GM for compliance reason of the current GM. Now, luckily this CEO, even though they don't have a strong presence in China, so he doesn't have a lot of people to work with. He has a, he worked with a service provider who actually also is his friend. So they were on a friend basis so he was able to come to ATTA and said, hey, do we do you have any candidates who can work with this, this specific assignment? And uh, the, this, this candidate worked, uh, had a good conversation with the CEO even on the first round of discussion. So they formed a good, good uh, relationship and so started the assignment very quickly. The service provider and the GM removed it, the current GM, and now the interim candidate is working through cleaning up the remaining issues since the GM has a, a lot of uh, these people inside the company and they need to be decided whether they will stay or they will stay, they will, they need to leave. So what are the best practices? I guess from the uh, company's, the, heck, the uh, Western company's perspective, number one, if, if uh, the guy has a proven credential and track records, you know, work in similar industries and or has worked in as, as an intern GM uh, before, hopefully uh, several times. And second, I think really this is the key, uh, good people chemistry between the intern GM and the boss. As we talk about the case number two, when there's a, there's a there's different interpretation of what the assignment is, uh, the, 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 you really you have a problem of trust now. Now, if we agree with the CEO, why didn't the CEO says those, he doesn't those trust him instead of this compliance issues? So I think if I, as an interim GM, I always wanna make sure the people who is gonna hire me, I can work with him. And it's much better to work with a, the CEO or, or, or whoever hires me as good chemistry it's easier to build trust. And especially today, the only thing we can do is online. And online, you have a lot of subtle uh, body gestures and all the rest of you, you, you can't see if you physically, and you, you know, you can't, you can't get that. So it's much better, you've got good people chemistry, build the trust, all interior assignments are likely to have surprises and that, that you don't like. And it's if you have trust and good people chemistry, it's much easier to work through those those surprises, then if you don't. I mean, so for, for case number two, I think it's great for engineering GM to say, look, you know, this may not be the best solution. Let's part ways and then find another person who can, who can do this assignment. Now, third is really to agree on the specific objectives before the assignment starts. And then revisit them periodically to make sure these assignments are still the same or they need to be modified because the ones that, that I went into, usually there are more problems than what the, the uh, client tells me. And they need to be recalibrated to make sure we're still on the same page. And, and also that the interim GM should always inform the boss before he makes any major business or people decisions and get agreement. That, I think that is always the best way to make sure the assignment goes smoothly. Because if you make it, if interim GM makes a decision the boss does not like, 
he may not have a choice to remove the interim GM right away, but again, it starts to build mistrust. And that is something that will destroy this relationship and potential assignments. And the last one is really agree on terms of friendly separation to say, hey, if, if we de one at time when we see that we don't see eyes to eye on many, many major issues, it's time to part. And what is the best way to part? In my case, I would say two weeks to four weeks. It's, it's, it's no big deal. As, as soon as the boss, we have a disagreement. If the boss has a, another plan, I'll be happy to stay until the boss finds another, another plan. Of course, I really didn't have to do this, but if it's spoken up front, it makes the uh, relationship much easier because the, the hire doesn't have too much concern about not working out properly. Now, uh, in terms of, since you guys mostly, well, I guess the fan is mostly financial executive. So let's talk about uh, the financial side a little bit. The, as the interior GM, I think prefers to, re, to preview all the financial records, you know, the monthly record, you know, uh, Annual uh, performance prior to start assignments, especially if the company is in the financial stress or financial irregularity. And of course, often they, they are financial uh, audits are required. And then sometimes uh, interim finance directors are installed. In, uh, people, people like Jay, uh, you know, sometimes come together on, on certain assignments. Now, I will share a few stories on the financial side. I think the one of the the lighter one, lighter side is one time I was an uh, interim GM for a company uh, with revenues less than $10 million. And, but I find something peculiar because th their inventory is only $50,000. And they, they, they are making, building equipments for uh, robots. And I find that's almost impossible. So once I get in there, so I start looking at the financial records. And lo and behold, very quickly, I find out uh, they, they write off all raw materials as expense. Everything is expensed, except the $50,000 at, at the workstation, the workstations uh, at the clients, so that they, they can't write them off. So it has to, all these inventories uh, has to be reinstalled, but uh, in Chinese financial uh, regulations, uh, it's very hard to do. We, I, we, I had to find a financial consultant willing to uh, gradually work us through the system and uh, restate the, uh, the inventory over time, uh, over a two year period to really clean it up. The other things that, that, that I find com common on the financial side is really uh, people sometimes are selling uh, non-profitable products and, and with the, uh, the uh, perception that if I sell long enough, even the low margin business will be profitable. Is really in general not the case. So the case is to persuade the, the, the headquarters or the boss that not to, to do so. And then once once those are removed, uh, in many cases the profitability is quickly restored. Now, uh, in period from say December to, to today. In ATTA Shanghai chapters, we have four interior assignments simultaneously working on four different assignments. Uh, it seemed it does seem to the starting October there's a lot more inquiries, and we do still have two open inquiries that hasn't been filled for reasons on both sides. Either the clients are not 100% ready, and they're just looking, and or they, they didn't find the right uh, interim GM candidates. No, but, but anyway, a quick introduction of ATTA. ATTA is basically uh, project managers, interim uh, executives uh, who work together and meet together and, and share business leads and then also um, talk about what's the best way to do a turnaround and transformation. We share business stories. Uh, and then we work with chambers of commerce in different countries. We do that and then and, uh, mid last year, we set up a digital transformation group. This digital transformation is, is everywhere, also in China. So we have a digital transformation group and, and we bring digital uh, transformation executives into the group as well. 
And basically, if we look over the uh, last uh, five, 10 years, we, we must have participated in uh, over 100 turnarounds. I have done 12. So different industries, I think, I, I think uh, that's basically general industries. And on the previous page, I showed the ATTA uh, the, uh, website. And then if you're more interested, you can, you can visit our website and, and discuss. And that's the end of my discussion and open for questions. Okay. Thank you so much, TT. Um, yeah. Now, how do I get rid of this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Stop sharing your screen. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, I, guess I can start my video again. It's done. We can see it. Okay. There we go. Do not touch anything. So um, before we, we, we go around the room, uh, are there any questions? Does anybody have any questions about uh, to TT directly about the ATTEA or any, any uh, specific questions on the cases that we were just looking at? Yes, uh, my name is Terry Mo. Uh, I was a managing director of a number of uh, IT and semiconductor company in China. I have one question uh, for TT. When you start to talk about the compliance issue, what area of compliance are you talking about? Uh, usually that uh, people are talking about <clears throat> the GM is taking money out of the company or actually trying to set up a, a side company doing similar business. These are typical. The other ways were being the business practices in, in the specific industries are sort of gray. So they they were making payoff payments, uh, etc. Those, those will be the ones that's uh, under the invoicing a friendly company. Pardon me. You said or invoicing a friendly company. It could be, yeah. But you know, the friendly company could be his own company, etc. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I exactly. That. I had yeah. some experience also in China, and I was several times there. So, yeah. I just one com one question here. Uh, sometimes when company go to China, uh, they have joint venture. They sometimes majority ownership, minority ownership. Especially if they are majority ownership, the financial are consolidated into the U.S. books. In a situation in the past, when you see this non-compliant in a joint venture situation. What is your normal step of resolving that problem with your parent company and also with the Chinese company? Well, I guess really depends on whether you're in control. Uh, because uh, there, there are two ways of management control. One is, you know, you know theoretically, you have majority share owner, right? But, but uh, in practice, if if the Western company is a majority shareholder, but really left the general man local general manager, who may be the minority uh, shareholder, but he runs basically everything, maybe except finance, then trying to remove the general manager might become difficult because most of the manager report to him or maybe his people. And you do not know what their loyal loyalties are. There's one private equity uh, firm was talking about removing their joint venture partner, who is the minority partner, but everybody who works for him was hired by him. Isn't it? They haven't pulled the trigger. Isn't this uh, not an issue of loyalty? Is what is doing the right thing? Well, it's uh, it's doing the right thing or wrong thing, but uh, if the company collapses, the private equity firms uh, has to uh, be responsible to their their investor. If it's your money, you can do the right thing. If it's your private equity firms, and you you know you you have to return on investments. So if if the company co collapses, you have a different issue. So you normally is finding a way that you regain control and, and get some ways to remove the general manager that may suffer, but, but does not collapse. That will be the normal way that the people over here do. And besides, there's also some Western company will say, this is the right thing. 
but then the question we ask is, hey, do you have clear evidence? And that's where in this compliance versus I do not trust the general manager comes in. You often you do not a lot of Western companies do not have clear evidence of corruption. It's just a suspicion. And and then then becomes tricky because if you act on just pure suspicion, then the people below them will be targeting each other to get rid of their enemies. Because if if you, a lot of bad words can can create results, then why not try it? And then eventually, the new general manager doesn't just know who to trust, and they, they can't operate. I think evidence is important to make sure that uh, everybody else sees it, and then you can still operate afterwards to say because clearly this person has done something wrong, and that's why he's removed. That's my. That's a, that's a great response, TT. Uh, one of the things that we get involved with a lot is, uh, is audits and uh, setting up financial control systems. And the first question we always ask is, do you want to find the fraud and lock somebody up? Or do you want to fix the problem? Because in reality, if you really spend a lot of time chasing the guys that are in trouble, or the guys that have cause you the the issues you might catch them and 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 go after them but you destroy your own company while you're doing it and if you uh if you cut off all the channels if you set up proper controls as you go through and you set a a, a, a strong enough system you don't leave them any wiggle room and they tend to just uh they 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 leave by the they leave on their on their own because they can't make money anymore <laughs> 